Hi, welcome to the EEV blog. I'm your host, Dave Jones, and this is episode number 23. Uh, just a couple of weeks back, I was um, working on uh, the front end for, for the design of a uh, GSM um, mobile phone. It was actually a uh, GSM uh, GPS uh, as well, and also Bluetooth. And um, I've got some. You know, I've got an interesting story about the uh, prototyping for that project. Uh, we thought we would prototype the um, audio front end because um, the audio, uh, the uh, headset, which you know drives the uh, audio in a phone like this one. Um, can be a major design problem with uh, GSM phones, and and it's it's a notorious problem, and you've almost certainly come across it yourself. I'll see if I can actually demonstrate it here, shall we? Let's give it a go. I'll um I've got my mobile phone. I'll um dial my home phone here. Here we go, and I'll answer it. And... What a uh, GSM mobile phone does is it actually uh, sends and receives in um, uh, packets at a predetermined rate. And um, so what it does is it, um, it, it generates, um, you know, these RF bursts and current uh, draw bursts from your power supply if you're actually designing the chipset itself. So there's two separate uh, issues here, really. One is the uh, power supply current surge from the um, GSM chip or the GSM module you're actually using. That's, um, you know, that's a problem for the actual GSM uh, circuit designer. And um, the other problem is um, RF, which, um, which, you know, the massive RF field, which can get into nearby products, like, um, or it can sneak back via the um, uh, antenna back into its own product. So the RF energy from the um, antenna can sneak back into um, your actual GSM phone which you're designing. So there's two separate issues. So let's look at the uh, current draw um, for a, um, a GSM phone. It looks like this. If, if this is current, okay, this is I, okay, it'll have um, the uh, GPS module will have a level which is it's quiescent uh, current, and then it will actually draw bursts, like it will actually draw bursts of current like this at a fixed um, predetermined rate. And this is uh, transmitting and this is receiving. It doesn't require as much um, uh, current usually to actually receive. So, and this is at a repetition rate of 217 hertz. And this 217 hertz is the magic figure um, that you have to worry about for uh, GSM um, mobile phones. We thought we'd just prototype the headphone amp to see what issues we had and, and it proved quite valuable that and see what performance we could get using you know really um, best type uh, construction techniques, low noise construction techniques and, and see what we could get. So I built this little sucker, this could take some focus in, but I built this and it looks really really ugly but it's 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 not. There's there's um quite this is actually um quite a good and well known technique for um uh, building um you know a really tightly coupled low noise circuits. You get some copper clad board uh, like this, and you put your and and your wire components on there point to point. It's called point to point construction technique but it's also called a uh, dead bug construction technique um, and I'll explain why. Tiny QFN package and you actually turn it upside down on your this is your blank copper clad board and you actually um, and what you do beforehand is you actually cut in um, little isolated pads into your copper clad board but there's many different ways to do it but this is how I did this particular one Anyway, you turn your chip upside down, you apply some glue, and you stick it on your board. So, so it's like a bug, and it's, you turn it upside down, it's a dead bug. So the leads are sticking up, except this one didn't actually have leads. It just had tiny little pads on the bottom, but it makes no difference whether it's a SO package or something like that. Direct very short wires straight to your ground plane. So this is your ground plane right under the chip, and you can actually wire things straight on. And you can actually, the good thing is, is that you can actually turn components um, on their end, like this. You can actually uh, turn components like this 
and you know solder directly on there and it creates very very tight um, loops you know they uh, the actual um, current loops in there the actual ground power and ground loops are incredibly small and they can be smaller than what you would get on a purpose designed um, board sometimes so, so it's it's really good it allows you to have a big ground plane right under the chip on the top and the bottom of the board because the board will be double sided and you can have a ground plane on the bottom side as well and you can actually strap the top and bottom ground planes and and you can do all sorts of things and then you run little point to point wires everywhere but the idea is that you can really get some low noise uh, really good low noise construction out of these things and I'll show a couple of um, photos as well of it I did uh, a few different prototypes that's the technique now what did we get with this little thing you know I was you know I was quite proud I built this little thing and you know I was all that you know it's properly decoupled and and it's got a voltage regulator on there really tightly coupled and and all sorts of things and it's it's really designed nicely you couldn't get much better and we found this was it performed horribly you would still get when the mobile phone came within QE of this thing or th this is the headphone um, socket you plug your headphones in if you put your phone anywhere near the um, headphones plugged into this you would pick up that um, garbage that we heard before you would pick up that 217 Hertz and its harmonics and and all sorts of horrible artifacts now this is a real problem because if you've got an amp like this if you've got you know your headphone driver amp and it's going out here and it's driving your you know it's driving your set of headphones and you've got input and you've got power okay and you've got ground now RF is a horrible thing RF can sneak in anywhere it's really horrible stuff now um, not only can it sneak in at the from the headphone leads here it can sneak into the input of course and it can also sneak in via the uh, ground system and it can also sneak in via the power as well power and ground input and output you screwed all sorts of ways but it can also and this is one of the things it can also sneak directly into the um, silicon die itself it can get in there and you've got to remember that um, at, at RF um, every PN junction, every diode, is a potential RF detector. It's going 800, 900 megahertz, um, and also um, 1800 megahertz as well. Okay, you have to try and put in RF traps to actually reduce this. So we would put in our little RF traps, and we'd put in a couple of caps to ground on the, and we'd do this not only here um, on the output, but we'd do it on each rail. And we do it on the input and like right at the chip using this, you know, low noise, uh, using this very tightly coupled construction technique. We, we put these recommended RF traps, it's 33 picofarads and 10 picofarads, and to this chip. It was an um, LM4809, um, and, um, no mod and no matter what we did to it, we just, we just could not get rid of the problem. It was always there. So to get rid of the problem, we had to resort to a specially designed um, RF immune headphone amplifier, and it's the uh, Maxim 9724. And this is um, a specially designed and laid out um, chip that's immune to um, RF uh, interference, and um, specifically for use in GSM mobile phones. It's purpose designed. And we, and we got this chip, we got some samples, and we tried it out, and lo and behold, it worked perfectly with nothing more than a single bypass cap. That's all it needed. It was amazing. You know, no RF filtering at all, uh, no low dropout regulator on the input, and, and, you know, nothing. We couldn't believe it. It just worked. So, there you go. You know, next time you're doing something critical like this, remember about RF immunity, and... Um, because it can be a real problem and a great test for your product actually after you've designed your product a really good test is to get your mobile phone and put it near you know put it make it ring and put it all over the board and see what happens to your board is your next product capable of passing the mobile phone test give it a go it's a really you know neat test to see how immune uh, your product is to high levels of RF energy so give it a go next time